Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! Resolve. In the last episode, we paid a visit to Van Zeeks. Yes, that's right. If you remember, uh, if you have watched the, uh, the episode, of course, you will have seen how we interacted with him. And, well, we did everything we needed to do to unlock the Crystal Tower, which is at the Great Exhibition. And now we are here at the crime scene at the Great Exhibition Grounds, foot of the Crystal Tower. And now we're supposed to investigate the crime scene, which we are going to do. It's the 22nd of October at the Great Exhibition Grounds, foot of the Crystal Tower. Ugh, the showgrounds are a little too big for my liking. We've been walking around in dense crowds for two hours now, and I've felt myself swooning three times. There are a lot of people, aren't there? I've almost been trodden on three times, too. Be careful, won't you, Iris? Don't let go of my hand. We finally made it through the, uh, through the throngs, though, by the look of it. Here we are underneath the public experimentation stage where the explosion happened yesterday. What's that? I can hear voices from up on the stage. It sounds like an argument. Right, I've had it with you this time. I'm warning you. I'll arrest you in a minute. Oh yeah? John the Spot Spectre, give it a shot. You ain't got no evidence, and you know. Wait, I know who those voices. You've got a cheeky little mouth on you, young lady, but an eye in the cells will teach you some manners. Just try it, I dare you. If you want the bag of chips rammed down your throat. Yoo-hoo! Gregsy, what are you doing up there? Oh! Oh! It's you! Here! Here you are! Here you are! Yeah, your ladyship! How are you, your ladyship? I do hope you're well, your ladyship! Does that make you three times a lady? I'm not well at all. It's far too busy everywhere. I wanted to ride a balloon, but there was a three-hour queue. Unbelievable. I've got to have a word for you at once, your ladyship. You'll be flying as high as kite in no time once I pull some strings for you. Tobias Gregson, an inspector at Scotland Yard. Until recently, he was suspended from duty, but it would appear he's back in action now. He's actually quite well known, appearing as he does in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And for that reason, can't say a word wrong to the story's author, Iris. But there are limits, sure. Or well, there should be. Watch it, sunshine! S sorry What gives then? Don't tell me you're on this case. Yes, I'm acting for the defense. So we're here to investigate. Hmm, dear me, that's the situation, is it? Is it really that troubling? Sir, amazing fire, Bob! Is that all you got? You're a lawyer, ain't you? You could stand to carry a bit more copper around in your pockets, Mr. Narado. Well, hey, that's my last bit of spending money, that is. You can have it back, but I'll have to charge you for all that mother. Three bob. This is Gina Lestrade, a pickpocket or diver, born and bred in the east, of, east end of London. In the case that led to my own suspension six months ago, this is the young girl I was defending in court. What's your problem, huh, Odo? Diver? Pickpocket? What's with all the bad name calling? You want to bag all chips right down your throat and all, do ya? Uh, I, I thought you were proud to be a diver, Gina. You were just arguing with Inspector Gregson about it, weren't you? I assumed you'd been up to your usual tricks here at the showground. That ain't no way to talk, Lady Odo. Half a year is a long time, people can change. I'm an apprentice now, learn to be Scotland Yard Detective. So you'll have to call me what everyone else does. It's Inspector Lestrade now. Oh, in... Inspector? That badge is homemade, surely? 
The inspector part isn't entirely accurate. No one calls it that. For what it's worth, anyway. Investigating is off the cards for all of us. What's that supposed to mean? Right, well, I'll be back up top. You hold the fort down here, all right? Right, sir. This... This raises a lot of questions. It surely does, but you know me. You know me, guys. We have to have a look at the crime scene. Oh, it looks as though somebody dropped something behind the tree just there. Dropped or hid? What is this? Some part of the machine that exploded? Maybe it could have fallen from the platform above in the blast, perhaps. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. I think I'll hang on to this just in case. The mysterious contraption has entered into the court record. Mysterious contraption, a very curious device found behind a tree under the experimentation stage at the exhibition grounds. Almost as if it had been hidden there deliberately. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What is this? Oh, look, what's this? A ripped piece of cloth. Hmm, it's not like any fabric I've ever seen before. It's very thick and stiff and looks extremely durable. It's canvas, I think, with some sort of rubber backing. And the edges appear to be a bit charred as well. Maybe that means it had something to do with the explosion. Let's make a new fit while Ginny's midway on. The piece of green cloth has been entered into the court record. Okay, so we have that. What about this? This is the entrance to the Crystal Tower. The Crystal Tower. It's certainly an apt name. It was built to be the focal point of the exhibition, and it definitely is, being so tall and with all that glass. Can't imagine a building like this ever being erected in Japan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are lots of exhibits inside the tower as well, apparently. Of course, there's an observation deck, but there's also an art gallery, a zoo, and a museum. But I heard you have to queue for three hours just to get through the doors. Well, at the moment, that shattered glass from the failed experiment may, may well be the biggest draw. And thanks to that accident, the whole tower is shot. Suddenly, it's not the crystal tower anymore, but the crystal glass shower. Apparently, everyone's th t taking to the skies now to look down on the disaster area from above instead. But there's a three-hour queue to go up in a balloon now. Londoners must be very patient people. Uh... I at least heard that English people love to be in queue. Even on the bus stop, you would queue up. Here in Germany, we don't. We just try to get in as fast as we can. Oh, the balloon. Like, let's have a look at the balloons. I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but what are those funny round blobs floating in the sky? Oh, they're the flying balloons I've been talking about. I want to go up in one so much. I've... I've read about situations like this in a magazine about strange phenomena. C creatures from outer space c coming around flying objects to, to attack her. What? I I suppose inhabitants of other planets are b bound to be interested in the gr great exhibition. This is it, Iris. It's happening. It's not. Don't worry. I'll explain it all to you later over a nice cup of tea, Runo. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, wait a second, there was something that we, ah, okay, so this is the experimentation tower. This platform must have been set up for the experiment, I suppose, it's very high up. About 30 feet above the ground, apparently. That's what a policeman just spoke to said. Uh, just a spoke to said. I don't really, uh, I don't really understand feet very well, we don't use them in Japan. Oh yes, sorry, it's about 9 meters, but soon you'll have been... In London the year, Runo, it's time you get used to our measurements. Yes, well, this thing is so tall, the spectators at the front would just have seen a wall and nothing else. They probably thought they'd secured the best spot to watch from, only to be disappointed. There's a saying, Japan, the darkest spot is right under the lighthouse. I feel like it probably applies here. A oh, very, very interesting saying. Okay, so these are the steps. These stairs obviously lead to the stage above. We should go up there and investigate the exact spot where the experiment was being conducted. No! I messed up! Oh 
Oh no, we wanted to talk to Gina first. So that's it, is it? The machine that blew up? Oh, it must have been a magnificent explosion and I've seen my fair share. You've seen things like this before, you mean? Of course, Hurd is always doing experiments that end in a, in a bang. In fact, in his own words, explosions are the very essence of chemistry. Ah, uh, that might explain the smell of burning that frequently comes wafting, uh, wafting up the stairs. One time he made something that exploded with such force it took the roof off the building. I wish you'd been there to see Runo. It's hard to get too excited about that, given that I now live in the roof. Well, anyway, that's enough about that. It's time to investigate. I'm sorry, Iris, but it's not. Oh, look, Inspector Gregson is over there. He seems to be deep in thought about something, whilst eyeing up the machine carefully. Really? He just looks confused to me. Well, I'm really sorry, but we are going to... Where is it? Oh no, please don't tell me that we messed up. Okay, uh, just... So there's no way we can talk to Genie again. Okay, there she is. Oh, that really... So we have to click here to get up there. Okay, so good to know. Let's have a look at here. For some reason, the ground is damaged in this spot. Look, almost as if there was a fire here or something. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Mm. Yes, if you look closely, there's some scattered ash and burnt embers too. Well, I suppose there was a big explosion just above here. People probably wouldn't bat an eyelid at a small fire like this would have been. At a small fire like this would have been. I'm not sure we English are quite that laid back, Runa. Uh huh, interesting. So there was a fire, there was this contraption, this bird cloth. Okay. Okay, good to know. And nothing else here, right? We had a look at the crystal tower, we had a look at the balloon. Can't have a look at the Union Jack, apparently. Alright. Oh, wait a second, we can still look around. No, we can't, it's just. H is up and N is down. Okay. So, finally, let's talk to Ginny. But first, we're gonna present her some stuff. This armor is proof, in Japan at least, that I'm a defense lawyer. And this badge is proof that I'm a detective. So, you're all gonna have to start calling me Inspector Lestrade. In that case, you'll have to start calling me, well, anything but Udo. I could call you Defendant not or other if you like, but I don't really trip off the tongue. No, it doesn't have a great ring to it, does it? Alright, what about the newspaper there? Uh, it's R. Gina, would you take a look at... Oh, where did it go? Ha <laughs> looking for this, Udo. When did you do that? I wonder if you got anything else to show me, huh? What do you reckon? Give that back first, please. Okay, so that is not interesting for her. What about this? Okay, so th this is the same thing because we can skip. And what about the piece of green cloth? Nah, she has nothing to say to that either. Alright. Good to know. So let's converse about Gina. It was eight months ago now that I first encountered Gina in connection with a case I was working on. At the time, she was living in the East End with a group of other orphans. She helped a lot. Uh, she helped all of them survive by pickpocketing, but then she got embroiled in a murder. I had a lot of time to think in prison. I realized I couldn't go on like I was. The divine weren't walking out. The diving weren't working out. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear it, Ginny. Well done. So, you went from being a pickpocket to a detective. You got it! Good, ain't it? Inspector Lestrade, sounds like something out of book, huh? Talk about, talk about a sea change. And then there's Iris' old man to think about. Iris' father, you mean? Yeah, I promised her, didn't I? I said I'd get all the police force around the world to pull out all the stops looking for him. Just a small promise then, nothing serious. Oh, Jenny, you're so sweet. So anyway, that's how I come out. I had to go at the taste for Scotland Yard. 
Only trouble is, I don't read so well, do I? Just a small problem, nothing serious. And that's when Hurley approached Gregsy and asked for help. So the inspector said he'd take full responsibility for Ginny and made her a sort of apprentice. That was very magnanimous of Inspector Gregsy and brave. Well, you know Hurley, he enjoys finding ways to make people do what he wants. A great detective likes digging for dirt, in other words. So, the long and the short of it is, if you've got questions about the case, you can ask Inspector Lestrade. Right then, Inspector. Actually, there's still a big mystery surrounding Gina, isn't there? Oh, what, Runa, what? Well, six months ago, Gina was the defendant in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper. A trial in which she was found not guilty, and yet here she is still. Come on! You're not still about that, are you? The Legend of the Reaper, or whatever it's called. Call you didn't have worry, are there? If I didn't half worry, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of you left. It's like I told you before, ain't it? The Reapers kinda like my upstairs, so it knows what I like on the inside. That ain't really done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong might be stretching a point. What about Mr. Natsuma in Japan? He's perfectly fine, isn't he? Well, that's true. Perhaps the Reaper is more discerning than I thought. Exactly! So I won't, so I ain't worried. I'm totally fine. Alright. That's good to know. Yesterday's incident, let's talk about that. Cool, it was out of this world, it was. The brainy bloke pulled a bunch of layers on his, machi on his machine and suddenly it started blowing smoke. Then it just went pop. I ain't seen a better experiment either yet. Sorry? You mean you saw it, Jenny? With your own eyes? Yeah, of course. The boss is in charge here, ain't he? Of keeping me everything running smooth, I mean. The boss being Inspector Gregson, I suppose. That's going to take some getting used to. So all I have to say is that I'm on duty and I can do whatever I want to. Get this! I was up in one of them flying balloons when it happened, watching it from above! No! You're so lucky, Genie! Maybe I should join Scotland Yard too! Yeah, do it! You know how to put the boss in his place already, right, Iris? You'd have no trouble at all! Then it's settled. When do I start? No, 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 no. You can't join Scotland Yard, Iris. We'll see. Anyway, what I don't understand is this. If the machine exploded so spectacularly, how can Professor Bra Body Brain still be claiming that his experiment was a success? Oh, right. Well, it was a success, in a way. It was? How can it have been? Successful in experiment? Question mark. Surely after the whole machine blew up, no one could call the experiment a success. It's like I said, it did sort of work. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of smoke on that whooping great band. But where do you think they found the victim's body, huh? In the crystal tower over there. What? In the tower? You can see for yourself, can't you? Up there above the scaffold. Oh, where are all the glasses broken, you mean? Yeah, the cage what the victim got in start with. Really did get beam through the air or whatever and landed all the way over there. So, you see, it did kind of work, didn't it? What? I don't believe it. I mean, I don't get in, uh, the ins and outs of it, but anything's possible, right? With signs. Uh, I'll tell you what. You can add this. It's a plan of the experiment they drew up at the yard. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, go on! I had three bob of you before, so fair is fair! Yes, I didn't actually give that to you, did I? The sketch of the experiment has been entered into the court record, the experiment sketch, a diagram showing the relative positions of the crystal tower and Professor Har Hairbrain's machine that exploded. Hmm, alright, so let's talk about the investigation then, Gina. Something Inspector Gregson said before seemed a little strange. For well, what it's worth, anyway, investigating is off the cards for all of us. 
Yes, naughty old Gregs ran off after that without explaining himself. All right, that. The boss said no one's allowed to investigate that weird machine would blow up yesterday. Well, that's not fair. We're representing the defendant. In that case, could you at least tell us what you've learned from your investigations? No, you're not getting it. We ain't allowed to investigate it neither. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Oh. <clears throat> Why? What did the boss call him again? The forensic investigation team, I think. Anyway, apart from them lot, no one's allowed to lay a finger on the scene. Bit funny, ain't it? So even Scotland Yard's own detectives can't, can, can't investigate? Yes, I've never heard something like that before. I thought I could have a gun on the quiet though, but the boss caught me at it. You probably heard him giving me an off evil about it before from down here, didn't you? It's not bleeding fair! I think you were giving him as much of an earful back as I remember it. Yeah, well, sometimes I think it's all them chips what make him so stubborn. You say something to him, Otto! Go on! See if you can get through to him! He's up on the platform above us, is he? Where the machine that exploded is. We can try it, can't we, Reno? Rexy will listen to us. Well, if you say so, but we will have a look at the court record first. So this is the sketch. What's it called again? The experiment, uh, experiment sketch, exactly. So this is the experiment sketch. So this is the contraption. And the victim kind of was shot here, apparently. But he was supposed to be beamed behind the Crystal Palace or something like that? Hmm. So this is going to be important in court, I'm pretty sure about that. So let's examine this. I can't find anything out of place. Okay, so if you can't, I'm sure we are going to find something. Alright, so what about the bat? It looks like a layers of thick canvas with a thick rubber lining of sorts. I've never seen anything like it before. But applying Mr. Shorms' methods, you might deduce it was part of a raincoat worn by someone who really, really didn't want to get wet. And the charring must have occurred when the person was struck by lightning. Or maybe not. Okay. <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, guys. The dialogue. The dialogue. Oh, it's awesome. It's just... Awesome. Okay, nothing else of interest on that clock. So what about the mysterious contraption? Let's have a look at that. Hmm. So this looks like a crossbow, kind of, doesn't it? Hmm. There's a handle here. But we can't really examine any of it as it seems. Oh, there we go. We can look through here. Oh, there's some sort of lever here. It is a crossbow. What the? What is this? It, it looks like a cross between a bow and a gun. I think it's probably used for the same thing too. The details of the crossbow have been updated in the court record. Crossbow, a weapon found behind a tree under the experimentation stage at the exhibition grounds. It turns out that it's a folded crossbow. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, there we go. Let's have a look at the handle. It looks like you wind this around in order to draw the bow uh, bowstring back and create tension. You must be able to fire arrows with a huge amount of force using this device then. In fact, I would imagine it's far more accurate and powerful than a Japanese longbow. Oh, I really had no idea what I was picking up when I spotted this at the exhibition grounds. Aha. Uh -huh. I am pretty sure there's more to this. This groove here must be where the arrows are loaded, I suppose. So I was right, it's a sort of a bow with an automatic firing mechanism. This would be perfect for someone like me who catches his ear with a bowstring two times out of three. <laughs> In fact, if I'd had one of these, maybe I could have beaten Kazuma in Kyudo archery training. You couldn't have, you know that. There is no way, Rinosuke. Okay, so is there anything else of interest, maybe? 
doesn't seem like it. So this is pretty much it with the crossbow. But we discovered that it's a crossbow. That's something. Yeah, there's nothing else of interest. Okay, so what if we present the sketch? Gina, no, we can, we can skip that. Okay, we can, if we can skip the dialogue, we will skip the dialogue. What about the crossbow? Okay, nothing about the crossbow either. So that means we can finally go up. I'm really sorry, guys, but usually you can move to, uh, to places that are re really... Ah, uh, how could have I known that the st stairs obviously lead to the stage above? Yeah, we should go up there and investigate this. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's just go up there. And be here. We can't present anything. But guys, we are nearing the half hour mark very, very, in a very dangerous manner. So, we will have to look at this place in the next episode of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolve. Stay tuned to find out more about the crime scene or the scene of the accident. We'll find out soon. See you then.